Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And ding! On you, Husky! <laughs> Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Every young woman faces the problem in her senior year of high school of what she is going to do after graduation. We'd like to suggest a possible career that has much to offer any young girl who is about to finish high school and hasn't made up her mind yet. This possible occupation is nursing. Today, the fields open to the graduate nurse are wide and varied. She can enter hospital service, private duty, research, or any one of numerous others. To become a registered nurse, you must complete the usual three-year course. Or you may combine your studies with four or five years in college and earn a B.S. degree, too. Your studies in such vital subjects as psychology, sociology, and child care are supervised by skilled doctors and graduate nurses. If you are interested in finding out more about this career, you should go to your nearest hospital or collegiate school of nursing. Or you can discuss it with your school advisor. More nurses are a growing national need. Why don't you look into it today? This message is brought to you as a public service. The principals in the case stood before the judge. First, there was the complainant, Logan McAllister. His clothes immaculate, his black mustache and Van Dyke carefully trimmed, his black eyes vindictive. Skagway Bill was next to him, grizzled and disreputable, holding tight to the collar of a beautiful gold and white collie. Sergeant Preston stood on the other side of the collie, his hand resting on her head. Suppose you tell me what happened, McAllister. Certainly, Your Honor. I was walking down Front Street from the Palace Hotel to my office in the Victoria Building. This man they called Skagway was coming toward me. The dog was trotting beside him. And suddenly, without any warning... She snarled and leaped up my throat. Well, I threw up my arm to protect myself, and her teeth cut a deep gash in my wrist. I'm still wearing a bandage, as you can see. Skagway? That's about what happened, Judge. I don't understand it. Laurie's got a sweet nature. She's as nice a tempered dog as you can find. It's the first time she ever acted like that in her life. She's vicious. You were a witness, Sergeant? Yes, Your Honor. I was about half a block away. As soon as Laurie jumped McAllister, Skagway grabbed hold of her collar and held her tight. She continued to growl, but she made no effort to break away. What did you do then? I took charge of the dog, sir. I ex escorted McAllister to Doc Mundy's office and saw that his wrist was taken care of. And I took Laurie to headquarters and locked her up. Our veterinarians kept her under observation since then, sir, and there's no sign of rabies. <coughs> How is your wrist, McAllister? Well, it's healing slowly. But it was only quick thinking on my part to stop that beast from slitting my throat. I want this menace to the safety of the community removed. I want the dog destroyed. Oh, no, you, you can't do that. Judge, Laurie doesn't belong to me. I'm just keeping her till the real owner gets up here. Well, who is the real owner? Well, she did belong to Jim Turner. But he was killed in a fight with some trail robbers last winter. The sergeant can tell you about that. Sergeant? Jim was found dead on the trail between here and Grand Ledge. He'd been shot. Mm -hmm. It was found after a blizzard, and there were no tracks, so the man or men who killed him had never been found. It's true, Laurie did belong to him. I wrote to Jim's son, Jerry. He was fighting with Colonel Roosevelt in Cuba at the time. I told him I had Laurie and that I'd keep her for him. 
I promise, Judge. I've got to keep my promise. The dog's a menace. She must be destroyed. You're concerned for your own safety, McAllister. And the safety of everyone else in Dawson. This court can order that you be kept chained, that you be exercised on a leash and wearing a muzzle. May I offer a suggestion? What is that, Sergeant? As you release the dog into police custody, we'll keep her chained in one of the runs in back of headquarters. Sorry? Chained? You'll be able to see her whenever you wanted to, Skagway. She'd be well fed and well cared for. And when Jerry comes? I see no reason why the dog should be turned over to him. What? Will it satisfy you, McAllister? If the dog is placed in police custody? I still say she ought to be shot. The court has greater confidence in the efficiency of the force. Take charge of the dog, Judge. Yes, sir. Next case. When Logan McAllister left the courtroom, he went directly to the El Dorado Cafe. He nodded to two men who were standing at the bar. They followed him into one of the private rooms at the rear of the cafe. Lock it. Sure. Well, Logan, are they going to shoot the dog that bit you? No, she should be chained in back of headquarters. <laughs> You haven't as much influence in Dawson as you thought. I decided it was better not to press the issue. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you why. That collie belongs to Jim Turner. No. That's why she went for me. She remembered. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah, fortunately, she can't talk. And I found out something else during the course of the hearing. What? Skagway Bill was a good friend of Turner. Turner has a son called Jerry. He's on his way up here. Skagway's keeping the dog for him. Well, what about it? What's so important about that? <laughs> Would the son be coming all the way to the Yukon to get a dog? He's coming up here to prospect. Why not? Thousands of people are. I have a hunch he has a better reason. You think that Skagway knows? He could. He was Jim Turner's friend. Jim would have confided in him if he'd have confided in anybody. Hey, if. Personally, I don't think Jim ever made a big strike. The way he talked and we stopped him... We'd have forced him to tell us where it was if he hadn't have been so quick on the trigger. And he'd have registered the claim if he made a strike. You know why he didn't. It wasn't safe. The gold commissioner's office was outlawing claims, right and left. If he'd have registered, he'd have told the whole world where his strike was, and he might have lost it. I don't want anything to do with Turner or Turner's son or any phony strike. There's plenty of easy pickings here in town. You play along with us if I say so, Red. Oh, yeah? You kill Turner. You shut up. A single word that our Northwest mounted would be enough to put a noose around you. Logan, I swear, if you try to double-cross me, I'll kill you, too. Ah, cut it out, both of you. We were all in on that deal. You know it, Logan. Don't be so naughty, Red. A whole year's gone by. Everybody's forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, and I want to forget about it, too. Well, let's hear what Logan has in mind. Simple. If Skagway knows, we'll make him tell us where Jim made the strike. Simple. Why not? You said the same thing about Turner. Skagway won't put up a fight. He's a wreck. Yeah, that's true enough. We'll get him out of town, of course. The cabin near Grand Ledge. Be right back. Oh, quick. forget it, Red. This doesn't call for any shooting. Beat him up a little, that's all. I like the idea, Logan. I'm all for it. Lori was installed in one of the runs back of headquarters. The sergeant made her chain long enough to give her plenty of freedom. It was on a bright morning three days later that King stopped in front of Lori's run and found her chewing at the chain. King remonstrated. She'd only hurt her teeth in her mouth if she chewed on that stuff men called iron. Lori stopped to listen to him. But then she started to chew on the chain again. One of her lips was already cut, and King decided the sergeant should be notified. He ran to the sergeant's quarters and scratched on the door. The sergeant opened it almost at once. Good morning, King. Time for breakfast? King took the bottom of the sergeant's tunic in his teeth and tugged gently. And then he trotted a few steps toward the runs, asking to be followed. Something wrong, boy? All right, I'll follow you. Go on. Lori was still chewing at the chain when the sergeant reached the run. He opened the gate and went inside. Here, Lori, this won't do at all. What's the matter? It isn't hurting you, is it, lady? I know it's a heavy thing to be hanging on your neck all the time. I'll let you free for a little while. As soon as Lori was free of the chain, she lunged toward the open gate. The sergeant caught her in his arm. Oh, Lori, you can't do that, lady. You've got to stay here. What's the matter with her? Oh, hello, Judge. I just dropped by to see how our prisoner was making out. Not very well, I take it. She's been quiet up until now. I don't understand what's come over her. Easy, Lori. Easy, lady. She misses Skagway. She's been here every day. She was here last night when I fed her. Judge, 
I'm asking the permission of the court to take her out on leash. Why, of course. No muzzle. You can see she's cut her mouth. No, the muzzle won't be necessary. Thanks. Would you throw me that leash hanging on the fence there? Yes. Here you are. Thank you. There. All right, Laurie. Go on. Take me where you want to go. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. He did it! A home run way out of the left field stands, and the home team wins the game! Are you kids there? Are you seeing the exciting homers that your home team makes and cheering them on? Come out to the ball game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right inside packages of Quaker Puffed Wheat, Quaker Puffed Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, Quaker Paco 10, which has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see a wonderful major or minor league baseball game free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, just send the box top from the regular package of Quaker Ready to Eat Cereal. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't wait and miss exciting games. Act now. Now to continue. Lori dragged the sergeant to the front of headquarters and then down the main street until she reached the bridge over the Klondike. Then she started east along the frozen surface of the stream, the trail that led to the Bonanza and the El Dorado, the famous creeks that had made the Yukon the greatest gold-producing country in the world. The sergeant called a horse. No, Lori, I don't know where you want to take me, lady, but I can't go any farther without permission from the inspector. I'll have to go back to headquarters. The sergeant took the dog back to headquarters. He tied her securely out and back. Watch her, King. Try to keep her quiet, boy. There was someone with the inspector when the sergeant entered his office. A young man dressed in a parka and trail clothes, but obviously a newcomer to the territory. Well, hello, sergeant. I was just going to send for you. This is Jerry Turner. Jim Turner's son? Mm, that's right. This is Sergeant Preston, Jerry. I'm glad to meet you. I'm glad you're here, Jerry. He arrived last night, Sergeant. Since then, he's been looking for Skagway Bill, but he hasn't been able to find him. He's tried all his usual haunts. He was here last night at 6 o'clock. I didn't get in until 7. Any idea where Skagway might be now, Sergeant? I don't believe he's in town, sir. Really? Why not? Well, as you know, Laurie's been chained, Inspector. But this morning she was trying to get free. Chewing Sergeant the described Laurie's actions and her wild desire to follow the Klondike Trail. I'm certain that Skagway must have taken that trail either last night or this morning. Well, how could Laurie know that? Don't ask me to explain a dog's instinct beyond a mere human. But why should Skagway leave town? He's been expecting Jerry. Jerry wrote him that he'd be here just about now. I wonder if it has anything to do with Dad's claim. What claim? The one Skagway wrote me about. Oh, wait a minute. I have the letter here. Would you like to read it? Oh, of course. Here, uh, read it with me, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Of course, he doesn't say where it is, but if you happen to know where Dad had been prospecting before his death... He was a very secretive man. I wish Skagway had confided in us. This could have been the motive for murder, Inspector. I agree. I thought it was the gold Dad was carrying in his sled. The gold was gone when he was found, but according to the people in Grand Ledge, he didn't have much. I'd like to try and find Skagway, Inspector. I'm sure that Laurie can lead me to him. Go right ahead. May I come with you? Why... I don't know. There might be trouble. Inspector, I think it's just as strange as you do that Skagway should leave town at this time. He might not have left willingly. That's only a suspicion? It's based on the way Laurie's been acting, sir. And knowing that Jim had made a big strike before his death, knowing where it was, that could be dangerous knowledge, sir. How could anyone find out that Skagway knew? He told a whole courtroom full of people the other day that he was Jim's best friend. That he'd written to Jerry. About the dog. Inspector, Laurie was with Jim when he was killed. Two weeks ago, Laurie attacked Logan McAllister without any apparent provocation. That McAllister's left town, too. Hmm. I'd suggest that you find out, Sergeant. I will, sir, at once. It took the sergeant less than half an hour to learn that McAllister had hired two dog teams the night before, and that he had not been seen since. He returned to headquarters to harness his own team. Jerry pleaded to be taken along. Please, Sergeant. 
Skagway's about the only friend I have in the world. Uh, I want to help find him. If there's any trouble, I can take care of myself. Uh, I've been a soldier. I, I'm a crack shot with a pistol. All right, Jerry. You ride the sled. The sergeant harnessed Laurie into the lead position. All right. On your horse. And with King running easily alongside, the team raced out of town and up the Klondike Trail. <laughs> Late that evening, Bud Masters, who had fed Lori during her vigil at her master's grave, was heading through the woods toward Grand Ledge. He was wearing snowshoes, and the brilliance of the aurora made it possible for him to travel fast. But when he saw a light glimmering through the trees, he changed his course. Who could be living in that deserted cabin? There were two sleds in back of the cabin, and a number of mounds in the snow that told him dogs had burrowed deep to go to sleep. He circled to the front where there was a window and looked inside. Three men were lying on the floor wrapped in blankets. A fourth was sitting in the cabin's only chair. His hands were tied behind it. His ankles were also bound. Bud recognized the man. Skagway. And as if Skagway had heard the exclamation, he raised his head, saw Bud at the window, and mutely implored him for help with his eyes. Bud slipped out of his snowshoes and tried the door. It opened him. Swiftly, Bud moved to Skagway's side, cut his ropes, and then helped the old man out of the cabin, closing the door softly behind him. Bud, don't talk now. You might wake him up. I haven't had anything to drink for 24 hours. I've got to have Go ahead, eat some snow. Yeah. When Skagway had swallowed several mouthful of the freshly fallen snow, Bud helped him to his feet and strapped the snowshoes on. There. Uh, you go first. I'll follow you. They had only gone about a quarter of a mile when they heard dogs. Now listen, they're a lot farther away than the cabin. Must be on the main trail of town. But the dogs at the cabin also heard the distant team and howled a reply. And will wait until Taylor's turn the others. They'll be able to follow our tracks. You haven't got a gun? No. You take the snowshoes. Go ahead, I'll wait here. No. They're killers, bud. They're the men who shot Jim Turner. Oh, we may be able to give them a slip. The woods are thick up ahead. Some high rocky ground that's usually blown free of snow. Cave where we can hide out. Now, go on to your left. The two men forced their way through the deep, tangled undergrowth. In 15 minutes, they had reached the clear high ground where the wind blew free. Skagway took off the snowshoe. Where's the cave? Near the top of the ridge. Better make it fast. I can hear them coming. Here, I'll give you a hand. Yeah. The entrance to the cave was hidden by a cluster of boulders. Skagway and Bud reached it before McAllister, Mike, and Red came out of the woods at the foot of the ridge. Can you see them yet? No. Let's hope they figure we've gone over the ridge. Better get back a little farther. This is far enough. Look at that. Someone's in here. Over there. I can hear them breathing. It's a bear. Must be. Bear. Yeah, grizzly. What do we do? Keep to this side. As far away from him as we can get. Sleeping sound. Hibernating. Well, what if he wakes up? Well, he won't like it. We'll have to choose between a mad bear and bullets. I'll better keep quiet. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, which would you rather do? Read about your favorite baseball team in the papers? Or see a game on the screen? Or be right in the ballpark, yelling for the players on your team, eating hot dogs, drinking soda pop, and having the time of your life? Golly, nothing beats the fun of the ballpark. Come out to the game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate without paying a cent. If you're 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult, you can now get a free baseball ticket right inside a package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Quaker Puff Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get in on the fun. Right away, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, just send the box top from the regular packages of these same cereals. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. <laughs> tried to drag 
drag the team off the trail and into the woods, Sergeant Preston stepped on the sled's brake. Quickly, he unharnessed Laurie and snapped on a leash. Then he, Jerry, and King followed her into the forest. She led them straight to the cabin, sniffed at the door, and pulled on the leash once more. Jerry looked in the window. What do you see in there? It's empty. Blankets on the floor. Chair overturned. It's an easy trail here to follow. Go on, Laurie. Laurie plunged ahead. The trail was broken, and even when it swung toward the north into the heavy undergrowth, it was possible for the sergeant to run. King ran beside him, and Jerry struggled to keep up. Finally, they broke out of the woods at the bottom of the ridge. By the light of the aurora, they could see three men halfway up the slope. Hold it, Laurie. That's McAllister, the one in the light parka. That's where he is. No, Skagway isn't with him. Get down, they're going to shoot. Are we going to return the fire? I'll give them a chance. Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police, drop your guns in the name of the law. Not a chance. Taking cover behind those boulders at the top of the ridge. Keep down. I'll do the shooting. Give me the leash. I'll hold Laurie. Here. Got it. Oh, oh, oh. No. Slip down in my hands. There she goes. Oh, oh, oh. Straight toward the top of the rise. What was that? Sounded like a bear somewhere up there. Time of year, he must be in a cave hibernating. Shots will be up. Laurie's circling around those boulders. Skagway must be up there, too. King had caught the scent of the bear, and he knew that Laurie was heading for real danger. He begged the sergeant for permission to follow her. <laughs> King wants to go after her. McAllister might take a shot at him. I didn't pay any attention to Laurie. Skagway's hiding up there in a cave with a bear. All right, King, go on, boy. <laughs> King raced up the slope, giving the rocks where the men were hiding a wide berth. Then he swung back toward the opening of the cave. When he reached it, the bear's roar filled the echoing cavern. It was too dark for King to see much, but his keen sense of smell took the place of sight. The bear was on one side of the cave. Two men were huddled on the far side. Laurie stood in front of them, barking her defiance. The bear was about to charge. King didn't hesitate. He jumped straight for the bear's throat. The bear knocked him to the ground with one paw, and King backed away a little. The bear started after him, and then stopped to turn a wary eye on Laurie and the men. King closed in fast again, nipping at the shaggy monster. He darted back toward the opening of the cave. The bear came after him, his fury concentrated now. Out of the cave and into the open, he lumbered after King. The dog was so intent on keeping just out of reach, on leading the bear away from the cave, that he had forgotten about the man hiding behind the rock. He rounded the clump of boulders just above them. It was impossible to stop. He whistled between Mike and Red, with a bear less than 20 feet behind him. The sight of the terrible grizzly brought the men to their feet. There was only time for one shot. The bear was hit. The sharp pain only increased his fury. The men broke and ran down the slope. Panic-stricken, they dared not stop to aim, but fired over their shoulders as they ran. All their shots were wide. Finally, their guns were empty, and they yelled for help. The sergeant watched them, sizing up the situation. He's catching them. We'll have to save them. How? We can't shoot the bear without hitting them. That can be done. Give me a lift up this tree. I can shoot over their heads from the lower branches. <laughs> In a matter of seconds, the sergeant was standing on a branch and steadying himself against the trunk of the tree. He took deliberate aim and fired six times. The great brute staggered and then fell in his tracks. And when McAllister, Mike, and Red reached the bottom of the slope, the sergeant had dropped to the ground and was waiting for them. That's far enough. You three are under arrest in the name of the crowd. Half an hour later, the three prisoners were wearing handcuffs and sitting on the floor of the cabin while Skagway patted Laurie's head and told the sergeant the story of his capture. You guessed it right. They wanted to make me tell them where Jim had made a strike. I'd have died before I told them. And pretty soon I realized I was going to die anyway. Why? Well, they got to fighting, and it all came out. Red shot Jim. The others were in on it. After I knew that, they couldn't let me live, could they? I thought I was done for until Bud came along. <laughs> Might have been better if I hadn't come along. If you hadn't set me free, uh, I would... sergeant would have found you. Laurie was heading him straight to you. And the two of us wouldn't have had to face any bear. Sergeant, you can't believe the way King acted in that cave. Made the bear mad. Made the bear chase him right out of the cave. If it hadn't have been for that bear, you... Yes, if it hadn't been for the bear and for King and for Laurie, you three might have escaped for a little while. Not now, though. You'll pay for your crime, and Skagway will show Jerry where his father struck it rich. Yeah, I sure will. We'll be partners from now on, Skagway. 
You and I and Lori. It sounds good to me, son. Sounds good to us, too, doesn't it, King? <laughs> but it sounds as if this case is closed. Oh, 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 oh. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Your musical treat of the day waits for you throughout the week on Mutual. Each Tuesday and Thursday evening, it's time for Eddie Fisher and a session of music as everyone likes it. Young and old delight in Eddie Fisher's way with a song. And he's joined on every show by Fred Robbins as MC, Alex Stordahl's orchestra, and outstanding guest stars. Every Saturday, the teenager's favorite, Johnny Desmond, brings phonorama time and a roundup of the newest and best in popular recordings. On Sundays, the Enchanted Hour presents favorite music from the world's best-loved composers. Every weekday also means time for Hawaii calls and authentic melodies of the islands. Music fills Mutual's air throughout the week. Hear the Eddie Fisher Show, Johnny Desmond with Phonorama Time, Enchanted Hour, and Hawaii Calls on Mutual throughout the week over most of these stations. And now, here is Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston reporting, sir. Oh, yes, Sergeant. A man named Lee Quentin is wanted for murder in the town of Nugget Bend. I want you to go down there and try to find him. And he leads to go on, sir? Well, a boy was injured in the hills outside of town. The man who rescued him and brought him home may be Quentin. But neither the boy nor his mother will give us any details. Perhaps you can persuade them to talk. I'll try, sir. I want you to leave as soon as possible. Lee Quentin must be found and brought to trial. Right, sir. Let's go, King. <laughs> Yes, a murderer is at large somewhere near Nugget Bend. And it's up to Sergeant Preston to find him. A man who has killed once probably won't hesitate to kill again. Especially when he finds out that a Mountie is on his trail. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good hell from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America.